Alright, shooting off where we left off. We're leveling up a couple stats, and we got the Sunlight Altar here. Not sure if it's uh, particularly what we're going to need early on, as opposed to... It's going to be high stat scaling type uh, weaponry. We don't need that artillery at the moment. We just... Oh, lucky. Two item, too far. We're going to be uh, murking through our undead Paris here. <laughs> Uh, with the relatively small grunts in this area, they're not gonna pose a particularly hard problem for us. There's this, uh, boar, fang boar, you wanna take him out with backstab. We're gonna take him out easy. The, uh, the weapons we got at this point. This is why I like taking my time initially setting up my character. So you actually have a bearing and actually can play without struggling. Uh, it, it, it gets, uh, more comfortable during the plate style when you earn <coughs> your overpowered weapons and just for this area this would be overpowered later on you can tell it, it sort of dwindles down a bit in polarity but we're gonna just search little corners anything we need to grab like the alluring skull here just for the sake of grabbing it just so we can say we've completed the area we've uh re re Done this rendition of Dark Souls again, going through the area. Now, you will get ambushed here by a bunch of hollows. I want to take it slow one at a time, but I'm not particularly great with the spacing on the scythe as of yet. We're still learning, still trying to get our spacings done. And I apologize again, I'm still feeling fairly sick. But in this area, we're going to see what this area can yield for us. This might be the common grounds for the lunch breaks with the uh, people work here, the medieval military. Um, on this corpse, we have a mystery key. Now, what this mystery key would open is uh, it's quite telling. The purpose of this key is unknown. It appears to be a basic prison cell key. Now, in this area, what type of prison cell is there to open in the undead parish I can only think of one and one giant headache lies behind it and we got our large flame member there to plus 5 to plus 10 it's perfect it can only be one particularly large headache that is uh, <clears throat> trapped behind a prison cell and that would be the only that's what I mean the, the game is smart where it leaves keys near where they need to be opened that's the thing I can admire about this is um, it's not irrelevant to the positioning of the key. They just put them where it's relevant, which is good. I get lost in this area. I'm not sure which way to get out. It's been so long. But it's actually just the white lights there. Not missing anything. No, we can go <laughs> traverse through the white light onto the balcony of the undead parish. Now, a lot of people will remember this area when they first start playing the game. When they're relatively underpowered in their gear. They don't have uh, hard-hitting weapons like we do right now. And they're going along struggling with trying to kill and trying to accumulate the souls, farm a couple souls just to get to the next level. They might be uh, excited the fact that these enemies respawn infinitely so they can say, oh, I can cheat the system and just kill them a bunch of times and then just get my levels that way. But we all know that just playing through the game... You'll get a lot more. It comes naturally. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can get this guy in a ranged uh, fight. That one didn't... That one was too low. A little bit higher. Ah, that should have went through. There. There's something blocking... Yeah, I, I give up at this point. There's something blocking that balcony. That won't let it go through the hole. It's hoping to get him. Maybe if sorceries would count, but... Oh, the spear hollow here. Uh, <coughs> yeah, around the corner here, there's you're going to get a boulder knight and a spear hollow. Just watch out for the guy, the boulder knight. Just backstab him. And... We can move on to uh, the next part of the area, which is the actual church itself. Uh, we got a couple items here that we can grab. Open up the get the floodgates so we can 
pass through again if we ever die. Which you can see the uh, the damage we're doing. Ah, uh, we got the basement key. Now that isn't an irrelevant uh, key for us right now. 404. Because we've already cleared the lower undead berg, we've killed Capra, we've cleared the depths. That thing's been ticked off way earlier on in our playthrough. We've got everything. We're collecting all these things. Now, stand here. You'll see there's someone waiting behind to ambush. The Buckler Knight. He's the parry guy, and he will definitely parry you and make your life horrible if you don't get your attacks in at the right time. Uh, we got a Lucky Tide Knight Shard. At this point, we're, we're upgraded so far, we don't really need Tide Knight Shards. I get the parry in on this guy. I thought it would be more than one hit kill. But uh, it was just a one hit kill for a Tide Knight Shard. There you go. I thought I'd be parrying him at least four times in order to kill him, or twice at least. But So we have our Firekeeper Soul, our third Firekeeper Soul here. This is going to be great um, to upgrade our flask. <clears throat> it's going to yield just enough. And the last one that we can get on our playthrough would be killing the uh, the Firekeeper in Anolondo. I'm not going to kill the Daughter of Chaos. Or I'm not going to kill uh, the uh, Anastasia, the Firekeeper in Firelink. For those Fire uh, Keeper Souls. Because uh, I want to keep those guys alive. Just for the sheer fact just the... Oh, I'm getting... I'm not concentrating. Just for the sheer fact that I want to keep them alive just so we can level their covenant. And we've got the Firekeeper alive and Firelink at all times. We can use the Firelink Shrine. And if we get 30 humanity, we can get ourselves uh, a really potent uh, Chaos Fireball. Which is really good. These guys... Don't even bother rushing. It's 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 telegraphed to a point where it will catch anyone, especially when they're buffed, when they're running through. They'll just get caught up. So you just speed run around them. We killed the channeler. He's not going to respawn. Now I'll make a critical error, but this is something you might want to partake in in your playthrough. I forgot to kill Lortrick. <laughs> I ran to the gargoyles and killed the gargoyles, and then I went down to the dark root garden, forgetting Lortrick. And he killed our Firekeeper. Ah. Uh, this is a pivotal point in your playthrough. If you want to follow along with me, just leave Lortric alive so we can get his armor later and uh, just extra items. But we're just preparing for this boss fight so, the, so we can ring the second bell of awakening and can progress on through the game. At the moment, 33 vitality, 30 endurance, looking pretty staple. Haven't touched anything else um, in terms of leveling since the Wanderer, since I started as a Wanderer, and we're still absolutely overpowered. So it goes to tell you that right now, the, the path that we're going through is so viable for any person that's starting out. You want to have some fun. So we've left Lortric alive in our playthrough here. Uh, thought I'd have enough time to go to Firelink and kill him, but he ended up killing the uh, Firekeeper. So, that's unfortunate. But we got to get the uh, Bell Gargoyle down. <clears throat> so, in your playthrough, if you want to grab the Fat Bring quick, I would understand you want to kill Lotric. But, in this case, we are expanding our horizons, uh, following through the playthrough, and we're going to get Anastasia to talk, which is a plus for me. I thought I would rather go through that stage than having him killed. I'd rather have a, instead of having a tongueless firekeeper sitting in Firelink all the, for eternity, we can get her to have her tongue back, she can speak. It'll be all good, like, we'll just complete that quest. Along with a couple other quests. We'll be doing Sigmire's quest. Sigmire will do because get that slab at the end. And the Chaos Eaters are down there. We can farm red slabs. And uh, who else? Who else quest we can do? Uh, 
Big Cat Logan. We get our Crystal Sorceries. Just as a typical scroll, just to add up to our character. Just for later, just for sto stowaway sake. Now, we've rung the second bell. That entails us a uh, proper village that we can say we've completed the Undead Parish. There's nothing more <clears throat> in this area other than Lore Trick that needs to be done. We've... Oswald is here, but there's nothing he can give us. We've already got our max uh, Homeward Bones. So, we can say that was a relatively quick uh, Undead Parish run, especially with our overpowered weapons. Not much more. We've already taken out the, uh, the Black Knight in our previous episode. We can uh, give our embers to uh, Andre the Blacksmith. And, yeah, we're going to head down now. Get that bonfire lit by uh, the Undead Parish Bonfire. So this is, uh, this is this area done. This is, uh, we can tackle this in one episode. Just because the simple fact is it's, it's not that large of an area. And it's pretty easy. Especially when we're coming back with the scythe. It's plus five. And the Firekeeper Soul, that's pretty much the key item that we needed to grab. We've, we've activated the lift to go down to uh, Firelink Shrine. And we're looking pretty healthy. I'm trying to think now, is there anything we could level up next? I'm just hoping to, hoping to stick with our core main vitality and endurance. I don't know, to 50 or... Yeah, not too sure what where we can go from here. We're definitely not going anywhere near Sense Fortress for the time being. That was something off my mind. I didn't want to go anywhere near. Just because that's like branching off to the next. I put one point in Faith. Because I thought maybe we'll be branching off in Faith. But it's just going to be useless for us. If we're going to be using Homeward Bones, we don't really need the Homeward Miracle. We get our Gesture from Andre. And... So, it's telling us we need a special Ember. So, in order to give him the Ember, you need to walk away from him and then talk to him again. So, we're walking away. <coughs> we'll talk to him, give him the large Ember, and then we can give him a second Ember that we got from New Londo. The very large ember. But it's not queuing up right now. It's only giving a large ember. You gotta walk away again. Let's see what that gives him. New dialogue. Very large ember giving. Done. I forgot where we got the large ember from. I can't remember where the large ember was. I'm trying to think. One second. Again, I apologize for the quality. Still trying to make do with what I got. With um, We're actually uh, branching off to the end of the episode, actually. We've completed the Undead Parish. Probably going to just kindle up the uh, bonfire here. Seeing as though <clears throat> we've reversed humanity, we're going to make that bonfire to plus 20 flasks. Because that's going to be our new Firelink uh, bonfire. We're not going to have Firelink for a while because we've decided to leave Lotric alive. In your playthrough, um, that's what I'm saying. This is Undead Parish. If you're playing along, this is a pivotal point where you can make the decision whether or not you would like to leave Lotric alive or kill him. It doesn't really matter. As long as you, If you want his armor, leave him alive. If you don't want his armor, you can kill him and grab his ring. Because he's just going to be a headache for you if you're starting out a new playthrough and... You need Firelink Shrine always open. But I've made the decision to take out this demon type knight. And... You can see we're making work. Physical attacks? This guy is high defense against physical, but... This is where I want to end the episode, so... Catch in, tune in for the next one, guys, and I'll see you.